The word of God says in Matthew 25, starting at verse 14. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. And he called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. Dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Somebody say abilities. He then left on his trip. Verse 16 said, the servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earn five more. The servant with two bags of silver went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master, talking about Christ, y'all, returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they used their money. He's going to be looking at how we used our time, our talent. What did we do with the information that God gave you? What did you do with the potential and the purpose that's in your life? We're going to have to give an account to God. Are y'all with me so far? Verse 20 says, The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I've earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. Kingdom Foundation, we dealt with that. And so now I will give you more responsibility. Let's celebrate. He got more responsibility because he was faithful, Sherman, with the small amount. Last time I checked, the Bible said, don't despise small beginnings. When you're faithful over small beginnings, God increase you to much beginnings, larger beginnings. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you much many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you did not plant and gathering crops you did not cultivate. I was afraid I, I would lose your money. My God, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. If you knew I have harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least, my God, at least, I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ought to take the money from his, this servant and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Principle right there, what you don't use, you lose. You didn't use it, so you lose it. How many of us is, Lord, thank you. Father God, I thank you for this time. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to continue, my God, from last week, moving forward. My God, Jesus used this, per this parable to teach his disciples the importance of placing value, church, in whatever the Lord gives you. Ooh, whatever the Lord gives you, place value on it. How about your life? How much value do you really place on your life? Well, we'll say we place everything, all value on our life. Then where are you going to be at 8 o'clock tonight then? Uh, Y'all catch that? We place value on our life, right? Okay. Within these verses, the Lord has given us the formula to increase, of course, our capacity. As I told you last week, the capacity is the ability, write this down, to contain, hold, absorb, or to receive capacity. Can you contain what you're asking God for? Can you hold? <laughs> oh, my God, what you're asking God for. Mm. Can you receive? What you're asking God for. Now watch this, y'all. When we think about the word receive, we think because we talk to God that he's the one going to tell us. <laughs> when we talk to God and we ask God for different things that we want to receive, we feel like it's going to be God. God will tell you certain things, but guess who God going to use to say that again? Please say that again. Okay. And so if God is going to use people, my God, to answer your prayer, my God, to help you receive the things that you ask God for, what do you think the enemy going to do to try to get you disconnected from the people that you need to receive what you ask God for? Yeah. 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 See what I say? Yeah. God uses people going off of Christ's church and guests to advance his kingdom on earth. Yeah. The Bible says the heavens is God's and the earth belongs to man. 
God gave you and I dominion. That means rulership over the earth. My God, we are responsible, mankind, that's war man too, for what goes on in the earth. We always, as a people, blame stuff on God. We say, if God is such a good God, then why is all this going on in the world? Well, God gave you and I, I and you, authority over this world. It ain't God that's messing up the world, it's us. Because we don't know who we are, as the late Dr. Miles Monroe say. We're not using our gifts, our ability, nor our potential, my God. We are governed by the five sisters, and we're not being led by the Holy Ghost. Yes. Mm. The true capacity of a product, watch this, is determined not by the user, but by the manufacturer. The true capacity of a product is not determined by the user, you and I, but by the manufacturer. Guess who your manufacturer is? God. God determines your value, not your environment, not people, not places, not things, not your mistakes, not your failures, not our mishaps. That don't determine your value. Come on. Are y'all with me so far? God created you like he did everything else with the ability, the resources, and the attitude to fulfill your purpose. God gave you the ability. So why are you singing about a song about fear and then let you let fear rob you of everything? You sung about fear. The man of God led us in worship about fear. We sung. We bowed down. We worship, my God. And then we'll get up, my God, and go out here and do not what God told us to do because we let fear yeah. dominate and speak louder than the value of Christ. I can't get nobody to say nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm taking my time for a purpose, for a reason. Aptitude is the ability to learn. It is the ability of the mind and heart to receive ideas and knowledge. It is how you see yourself. Boy, this is heavy. It's how you see yourself. Your true capacity, church, is not limited. Write that down. Reduced or altered. Your true capacity is not limited, reduced, or altered by the opinions of others or, the pre or your previous experiences. You and I would never be able to rise above the vision or the perception that you have of yourself. Who am I talking to in the church? You will never be able to rise above the perception that you have of yourself. See what I say? God loved you and I enough. He put the value on you and I because he came down. He left heaven. Oh, my God, a place of holiness to walk among sinful flesh, my God, because he loved you and I enough. And if he didn't, my God, come down here, my God, we would have been all doomed for destruction. But he valued you and I. He loved you and I enough to where he came up out of heaven, wrapped himself in flesh, hung between two thieves, my God, so that you and I can dominate this earth. Come on, somebody, give God a hand for that church so if God loves you enough and value you and I at that level why come we don't value ourselves why do we continue to allow and be paralyzed oh I just feel like teaching today we are paralyzed mentally by the opinions and by the words and by the experiences my God that has happened in our life people has paralyzed us experiences has paralyzed us and we are given that my God situations and circumstances that much authority in our life where we cannot and will not move forward because we put all our value in what my mama said I didn't say. We put all our value in what my father did say I didn't do. Come on, somebody. And so we are stuck, my God, on the opinions of others. Because we give it the opinions of other people, my God. More, my God, more of a place in our mind than we are giving God in our mind. Come on, somebody. And we are stuck. We are stuck. We are stuck. I'm repetitious. We are stuck, my God, in poverty, in slave mentality, in mediocrity, in, ca in captivity in bondage because the opinions of other people because we give them more valuable more value than God in our own life when God loved you enough to die for you I told my daughter my God in the faith that I thank God that I was locked up my God 24 hours a day in that 6 by 9 cell and I had to face myself I could not run no more come on somebody because I was locked in that cell I had to deal with myself and when I opened up the word of God as Minister Margaret said my God this past Wednesday when you set a mirror down on the ground and are you looking to the mirror the first person you see is you and so when I opened up that word of God, I had to look at me, my God. But when I found out, my God, oh, my God, that God loved me and that God gave me dominion, my God, that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, that I'm not my mistakes, that I found out that God will forgive me no matter how much of a hell raiser I used to be. Oh, my God, it done something to my mind. Oh, when I begin to flip them pages, my God, oh, my God, and begin to believe what the word of God said about me, it did something to my self-value. It did something to my self-esteem, my God. I begin to rise, my God, and walk on the thing 
days that used to have me down and defeated, my God. When I pulled myself up through the word of God, my God, and began to accept who God said I was. When I started praying and asking God to reveal my purpose and my potential to me. When I told God, save my soul, God. Whatever you do, don't let me out of here the same way I came in. When I began to talk to God like that, God began to work with me, my God. God began to help my self-image, my self-esteem, my self-confidence. Many of us can't move forward because our self-image is messed up. Our self-confidence is shattered. Come on, somebody. We've been defeated by the words of the past, defeated by the experience of the past. We've defeated by the words our husband said, our wife said. we defeated by what our uncle said and did. Come on, somebody. And our value is keeping us paralyzed, and we cannot increase our capacity. Self-image. Self-value. Mm, mm, mm. My God. There are four keys that make up our capacity. Today we would talk about the second and third key. Last Sunday I told you about the key of ability to enlarge your capacity. Now we're going to deal with the second key, which is resources. Once you understand and God reveal your ability to you, now you got to go and believe God and begin to gather resources. Are y'all with me so far? Remember, we're moving up out of Egypt. Thank God for you, Mother Martha. Mother Margaret, my God, she said the Spirit of God showed her that pastor's trying to move the church forward, but we keep pulling it back. Because we want to stay in Egypt. It's easier to exist in chaos than it is to live in freedom. Because you got to pay a price to live in freedom. You got to make choices and decisions to live in freedom. So what we do, we accept just enough. We got just enough freedom on us, but we bound, bound up in many other areas of our life. And we have become content with having just enough freedom. Instead of being all the way free. And so, my God, once God gifts you and shows you your ability, who, my God, now you got to get the resources to increase and to enhance your ability. Resources mean something to take care of a need or something to use for an advantage. A means to resort to or supply. Resources, church, are a means to supply what is necessary. What is necessary? Have you thought about this? To increase your ability. What resources do I need to increase, increase my ability? <laughs> oh, my God. Let me get to it. I'm heavy. In other words, what do I need to accomplish the task? Write that down. What do I need to accomplish the task? When I was thinking of putting this together, I thought about you, Brother Charles, my God. And Charles started his line service. If you need a good yard man, Brother Charles, right there, good wave your hand, Brother Charles. Charles Harris back there, my God, a trusted son in the faith, been with me a long time. And I was putting this together, my God, and I was thinking, my God, when he started his line service last year, how God blessed him with a truck, and how he had to begin to get weed eaters and, and, and blowers, and he got uh, them, them, them zero tunners and all those different type of line equipment, my God. So God called him, my God, and my God, to, 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 to cut your yards and work on yards, my God, but he needed some resources to do what God gifted him to be able to do. Are y'all with me so far? And so he began to gather the different tools, my God, the different things that he needed, my God, to be able to accomplish the task that God has given him. So what I'm going to ask you, what resources are you gathering? What are you doing, my God? What are you gathering? What are you uh, accumulating? What are you doing, my God, to, to, to put yourself in position so that you can be effective at what God has called you and gifted you to do? Uh -huh, I'm going to say it again. What are you gathering to be effective, my God, at what God called you to do? You can't just pray and fast, baby. You got to work. Oh, you don't believe me? Read the book of Genesis. When he created the, earth, the garden, he told Adam, my God, after I created you, now it's time for you to take care of the garden. Go work the garden. Go till the soil. You manage this. You supervise this garden. The first assignment that God gave mankind was work. And so, therefore, even though you know your ability, some of you know what you're called to do, my God, but you're letting fear and you're not, oh, my God, gathering the resources that it's going to take to enhance your ability. Are y'all with me so far? And so, if you need money, what are you doing to get money? That's a resource. Okay, so when I was thinking about that, when I put that off in there, I began to say, okay, God, I, I need money to do what I'm gifted to do. And so, therefore, I need to make sure that I'm being faithful over little things. I need to be faithful with my tithing. I need to make sure I'm getting my credit right. That means I got to, come on, decrease and quit spending money when I can't afford to really spend money. Just because I can don't mean I'm supposed to. Come on, somebody. And so I got to be doing what I need to do in private. It's called organizing your finances, my God. Oh, my God, telling yourself no for a season, maybe two, three years, that you got to tell yourself no because you're trying to make a means to a means, my God. And if I need money and if I'm getting my credit right, come on, somebody, and then my credit go up and then I 
I can walk off it in the bank and I don't need to talk to nobody to sign my name and they're going to give me what I want because your credit is your integrity. Your credit tells the people, my God, how you are if you're a good steward. Don't you know that credit tells the people if you're a good manager? Your credit tells the people if you're a good steward over that. Come on, somebody. That's why them credit cards ain't yours. They belong to somebody else. Quit using them credit cards because they got your name on it. Come on, somebody. If you can't manage and supervise those credit cards, quit spending them people's money. You know you can't pay them people back. Quit transferring and transferring and transferring and transferring to a lower balance. You ain't getting out of debt. You just transferring and pour along in captivity. Oh, my God. You ain't doing but transferring captivity and bondage. You can change this over to 0% for six months, and then when you get to, to the fifth month, you transfer on something else, you transfer on something else. You're just in a repeated cycle. If you need money, my God, to do what God has gifted you and called you to do, then you got to get your credit and stuff right so you can position yourself to be able to receive the money that you need to go do what God has called you to do, church. That means you got to take up business with your finances. And God not going to bless you if you're robbing them. I wonder how many walked past you and didn't honor God. He said, if you be faithful over a little, I gave you five, then I increase you to ten. He, oh, it pleased God. Oh, my God. Oh, come celebrate with me because you're faithful. Then he took the one with the two talents. See, some of us see that two dollars. Ah, that's insignificant. But God said, if you must faithful over this two, give him four. And I'm pleased with you over that two dollars. So you're talking about you need money. I can't do it because I ain't got no money. But what are you doing with your credit? What are you doing in private to get your life right so you can get the money? Let's go a little deeper. How about knowledge? What type of knowledge are you accumulating to increase your capacity? What are you reading? If you're called to a business, what type of research is, what type of research are you doing? What type of books are you reading? See, my God, is a, my God if, if I'm trying to do something, my God, then I got to get around people that's trying to do what I already have done what I'm trying to do. And I need to sit there and glean from them. When you go into a meeting with people that's doing what you desire to do, shut your mouth and listen and take notes. See, I'm trying to say many of us, my God, cannot increase our capacity because we're afraid to position ourselves and put ourselves around people that's going to make us uncomfortable. But when you try to expand, when you try, my God, when you try, my God, to move higher in the things of God, you're going to be inconvenient. You got to be around people that's going to challenge you, people that's going to make you feel, ah, oh, come on, somebody, because God is stretching you. God is getting you ready. Many of us don't want to sit around nobody that's going to make me uncomfortable, so we run and stay in Egypt. Because it's easy to be around people that think like me. If I think like a chicken, I want to hang around a chicken. I don't want to be thinking, I don't want to be sitting around nobody that's soaring like an eagle. I don't want to hang around nobody that's going to make me uncomfortable. I don't want to hang around nobody that's going to tell me, my God, you ain't sin, you need to get up out of it, and so you can do what God has called you to do. So we go hang around, my God, with chickens. When you're trying to expand your capacity, you got to be around people that know more than you. You got to be around people that make you, un my God, uncomfortable. Oh, we're talking about it in this church. I'm trying to move us forward. So you can't get this in 45 minutes in a whole service. I'm talking about worship time. I'm talking about, I didn't say. Because see, I'd have been had to close the book by now because another service is coming in. And so what I am, I'm dominated and controlled, my God, by time, not by the spirit. Because I got to make sure this next people is coming in. Because I need that to do what I need to do. So I need to make sure I, I don't force nobody to say, oh, he took too long. So I, I got to I gotta bring them on in because I need their money. I'm free in the spirit. Y'all need to stay with me, church. See, because some of y'all, y'all like that. That's why you ain't saying amen. See, I'm trying to say, because you really want a whole 45-minute section. For whole, that means praise, what's everything. That means give me one song and then go sit down. My God, give me some announcements. My God, go sit down. My God, preach to me 30 minutes, 15. If you go 35, I'm sure enough not coming back. My God, I got things to do. But look how raggedy your life feels. I promise you, your life is raggedy. So you need knowledge. What books are you reading? What books are you investing in? The late Dr. Miles Rose said, if y'all heard me say it redundantly and repetitively, my God, never put a dollar amount on your soul. If you see a book, my God, and it speak to your spirit, you buy that book. Quit, come on, quit eating up your, quit eating up your, quit eating up your resources. You spend more money on food than you do on knowledge. And you wonder why you live in belief who God created you to be. Knowledge, knowledge. Tools, what tools are you losing? 
What tools are you using? What tools are you gathering? We're talking about, my God, increasing your capacity, and you need resources. And so all my business-minded people, let me come up a little higher. Let me get up out of Egypt, my God, and move a little higher. What tools are you gathering? How you position yourself? I think about how I watched just the beginning build from the ground up, and I think about how many meetings, my God. The first lady told her daughter, my God, she, my God, admired Janice, my God, because Janice, she's been with Janice and been around Janice for 20-plus years, and how the woman of God has built just the beginning and all the meetings and all the contacts, my God. And if you've been around Janice long enough, she contagious, and she love to say her name. How you doing? My name is Janice Jones. Come on, somebody. She love to call her name. But I look at all the meetings. I look at all the strategic meetings, all the influential. Boy, Janice is connected to some very influential people in the city of Tulsa, my God. Oh, my God, she's invested into that what God has called her to do. She got major resources flowing into just the beginning. I can't get nobody to say that. She's inconvenient. She stay up in the midnight hour. She's up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning praying and fasting. And then she got to get up and go, go and sit, sit in 3 and 4 different beds this meetings. My God, to do what God has called her to do. She understands that I got to be inconvenient for a season to get where I'm going. Many of you, my God, self-sabotage because you don't want to be inconvenient. You want to do as least as possible, my God, but you want everything from God, but you don't want to do nothing to get it. Somebody give God a hand. You got to make contacts. So that means you can't be prejudiced. And I'm not talking about black and white. Yeah. Prejudice is not just in color. What type of marketing? We have the greatest tool, one of the greatest tools in America right now is the social media and social web and all that. How are you marketing what you, do, what you feel like you're called to do? How are you marketing are you using your Facebook to talk about mess, to talk about your problems, or are you using it to talk about that business on the inside of you? Because, see, you can start promoting that business that God called you to before you actually get to business. I was talking about when I was in prison 20 years ago, Jew, what you doing, going off for Christ? I was prophesying a church and didn't even know I was prophesying a church 20 years ago. You can start talking about your business now. Why are you waiting until you get it to talk? So you got to have vision. Write this down. God gives provision where there's vision. God gives provision where there's vision. That's why it says write it down, make it plain. Yeah. But see, when God gives provision, you know what provision consists of? Resources. Resources. One, once you find, one, oh my God, once you find a lifestyle that fits you, you need a plan. What's your plan? What type of plan are you using? What type of plan are you praying for? What type of plan are you investing in? What type of plan do you have? My God, because you got to, oh, my God, anywhere that's order, guess what? God will send resources. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever there's chaos, he's not going to send resources. Right. So is it possible that it's not God that's holding up the resources? It's us because we have too much disorder and chaos in our life. God sends resources to order. We always say God's a God of order. God is a God of order. But then when we look at our lives, we don't see order. Yeah. Quit quoting stuff you ain't living. That's real talk. I'm just trying to help you. I'm following you. God sends resources to where there's order at. So all you that feel like you call, my God, you have the entrepreneurial spirit. My God, you have different businesses and different things that you are involved in, different adventures and things that you want to do. You got to make sure your life is ordered right. You got to make sure your life is ordered right because God sends resources to where there's order. Come on, church. My God. Mm. The greatest resource available to us is knowledge. <laughs> this is the most powerful book have I told y'all that you ever hold in your hand. This is God in flesh, human form, in word. Right here. In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was this. In the beginning was the word. And this was with God before there was a who, what, when, and what. You need knowledge. You need knowledge spiritually and you need knowledge naturally. It's not enough just to say, God, I'm going to sit and wait on you and believe for you. No, God said, go gather some natural resources. <laughs> go gather natural resources. We don't want to gather. We want everybody to just come up there and write a check for everything because we don't want to, again, we don't want to do nothing. Is it possible that we're struggling because with the spirit of laziness and slowfulness like he told the one? See, we, don't, we think because we go to work. <laughs> we think because we come to church. We think because we're in a 12. We think because we're on outreach. Is it still possible that we're slowful? You teaching, sir. 
Because you have a, God has gifted you with ability. God has put something inside of you that the world needs. And you have yet to birth what the world needs because you're slowful. Another word for slowful you can use is you make too many excuses. Yes, sir. Can't get this in 45 minutes. Stop making excuses about all the reasons why you can't do something and start, my God, do something and begin to take action to put the resources in your hand. We got to quit making excuses. That's what the one with the one talent did. I'm still with the text. He made excuses. It's always somebody else's fault. But I'm going back to what you said, Sister Margaret. My God, when I set a mirror down, the first person I see is me. So is it me? It ain't everybody else. Why is it that it's so hard to get along with him? What is God trying to perfect in me? What is God trying to work out in me? Why is it so hard sometimes? See, one of the enemy's greatest weapons, there's many of them, he would try to divert the real issue. He would try to get you to focus on everything but what you're supposed to be focusing on. He'll let you focus on the thing that he did do or he didn't do or she did do or she didn't do, and you never focus on the real problem. <laughs> is that it might be control, yes. might be pride, Jesus. might be disobedience. Jesus. To all my single women, be careful. Yeah. Don't wait till you get a husband, start praying now that God release the control that you got now. That's why it's hard for you to co labor somebody because you've been in control for so long. And God, you don't even give God a chance to operate because you control everything. As I told y'all, you got your alabaster box. You won't even let God mess with the box. You're trying to keep God away from the very thing that he's coming out of. He's trying to answer your prayers. And so what am I trying to say to encourage my single women? I'm proud of you. A lot of you single mamas, and you've been doing it for a long time. My God, you have kicked out all the most sorry men that ain't doing what they're supposed to do. But now you're still struggling with a spirit called control. And then when you get a shepherd in your life, you buck. Don't no man want to lay up with another man. <laughs> I guess I only got a few alpha. I guess I got only got a few alpha males off in there. That's the problem. I'm, I'm with you on the guy. We only got a few alpha males. We only got a few of them because see them the ones that still them clap. But the rest of them, they gotta sit still because. You, she, you like, you, you, she know, boy, you know you better not say nothing. <laughs> Everything you got is in my name. I'll... <laughs> yeah. I got a few more minutes. Let me get you out of here. Here's another reason <laughs> that must have set with y'all. Amen. <laughs> There is another reason that we make excuses. It's that word that the minister sung about fear. Fear will cause you and I to make excuses. Fear will cause you and I to make excuses. We fearful. You know why we fearful? Because we struck out last time, and so we have no fear to try this time. Again, you're putting value in your past experiences, your past mistakes. Why not put that same value in your future? God showed Pastor Dean some time ago that there's wealth connected to this church and I believe because the man of God just don't haphazardly just try to prophesy that's why you don't never see him doing it a lot but even God has showed the woman of God there's a lot of wealth and it's the wealth of riches laying up in you but until you get in submission until you begin to gather the resources, until you bring that gifted ability that God has in you, until you bring that idea that you have and submit it to the, mm, to the cross, submit it to God, I promise you, you will die full of purpose when we're supposed to return to God empty. You're gifted with greatness. You're gifted with resources. You're gifted with money is connected to that gift. Breakthroughs is connected to that gift. I told my class this morning, when you find your ability, when you begin to do what God has told you to do, you give it away. When God reveals your purpose to you, write this down, it's for you to give it away. When God reveals your purpose to you, it is for you to give it away. And I told him, I said, every time you see me preach, every time you see me in class, every time you talk to me in the hallway and I'm discipling you, I give you some word, I'm giving away my glory. I'm giving away my gifts. I'm giving away my potential. I'm giving away my purpose. Your purpose and potential and ability is not for you to sit on it, church. It's for you to give it away. And when you give it away, oh, my God, you feel so good. It's called intake. 
Once you got some intake, then you got some outtake. Did I say that right? Yeah, we too full. We pregnant. You know what I'm trying to say? Give it away. Somebody look at your name and say, give it away. away. Look at your name and say, you got what I need. Give me mine. (laughs) Woo, father-in-law, tell mother-in-law, I need everything that belongs to me. Woo, T, look at me. You got what I need. Give it away. (laughs) Stephanie, sister, you got what I need. Give me what I need. Why am I saying that? Because I just set you up. Y'all know pastor is very strategic. There's a lot of things that God, there's a lot of gifts and resources that God, that you have, that you connected to, that God brought you to this church. That you're not giving this church. You are robbing the body of Christ and going over Christ church. You're robbing us. I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about with your gifts and your abilities. Yes. You're robbing. Many of you do very little. That's why I always see the same greeters. Many of you signed up to be greeters, but you never greet but the same ones. That's a lack of integrity, Pastor. Why would I sign up and say I want to be a part of the greeters, but when it's my time, I'm, I don't come to church, but I'm going hard for Christ? That's a lack of integrity, man. Many of you men with resources that you got inside you that this church need. Members. I'm talking to my members. You're a guest. I ain't talking to you. Some of you older seasoned men. We got young boys upstairs that's struggling with a whole lot of stuff. Thank you, Ronnie. Stand up, Brother Ronnie. I'm still preaching. Brother Ronnie is using all of his experiences, good, bad, and the ugly. And he got young men, four or five young men that he meet with every Wednesday and he mentor that go to this church right here. (laughs) You have something that the body of Christ need. And the reason why we have mismanaged our gifts and our abilities, Tiffany, is because we don't understand that they belong to God. They don't belong to us. Now that you know better, now you got to do better. So I expect for many people that ain't doing nothing but taking anything that you feed you, you got to feed it. And so I expect for many of you to begin to allow God, move by God to begin to put you in different places. God, I didn't say me. Get involved. Because sometimes you can stumble up on your purpose. As they say in football, next man up. When somebody stumble, you step up. Where there's a need, you plug it. Quit complaining. It shouldn't be always to say, some of you men, I know you love sitting with your wife, but why are you not helping Porter? These men ain't just standing up looking. They standing up because they're protecting the ministry. They walking around making sure the kids is okay. You know what I'm trying to say? It shouldn't be the same men week after week after week after week. You come feed for me every week, but you don't give me nothing back. What resources that you got, men, that some of them young kids up there need? We're finding out a lot of stuff that's going on with our children behind the mentor groups. They testified about it in class this morning. A lot of great things is happening in the ministry. As I get ready to shift, because I only got one more, I'm not going to even mess with it, but I'm going to get this revelation. I'm going to pull it now, Pastor Chell. My wife called me yesterday on her way to work. We tend to talk on the way to work. You know what I'm saying? She always say, honey, you sleep good? Yeah, I slept good. She gave me a revelation that brought a lot of deliverance to me. It flows with what you was talking about, Pastor Teresa. And I don't know if I, this is pretty much what it is. It was a potted pot plant, a potted plant. You think about a potted plant. Boy, they sleeping on work. <laughs> you think about a potted plant when it begin to grow. And then one of the leaves begin to turn yellow. That means that leaf, leaf, leaf is dying. And what the other leaves do, they shift all of their energy and resources, I'm still with the sermon, to try to, ooh, Tasha, try to revive this one leaf that's dying. Now, we can look at that two ways. That's us, that's the other leaf being concerned about their sister, being concerned about their brothers. We can look at it like that, but in this situation, I'm looking at it from a different position. All of the healthy leaves turn and give all their focus. That's why it's so important to be in a 12. I don't care what has happened. My God, if you didn't fit with the other one, then find one that you can fit with. Let me tell you what 12 is about. I'm still with the sermon. My God, this is just God. Y'all know I'm fooled. Don't laugh at me. Just follow me. See what I'm trying to say? But see, the 12 is not about dominant and governing and trying to see what your life is about. The 12 is about you being accountable. So when something go on, my God, if you can't get to me in the first lady, you got other men and other women that you connected to to help you. See, because you're not going to be able to call my phone. See what I'm trying to say? You're not going to be able to call her phone because I won't answer. 
I may, I may not answer. See, I try to say, but when you connect it to other sisters, and other brothers, my God, it helps you. Who have benefited from principal trial? Let me see your hand. Amen. Amen. It's not it. And so therefore, it's not about. So when you send your P12 a leader and you say I ain't coming to church, that's dishonorable. What you mean you ain't coming to church? Is something wrong with you? What, what, what's, what's the matter? Are you sick? Are you having a problem? Are you in a car wreck? What, what's the matter? Is there anything I need to be praying for? Do we need to come see about you? You just send a text and say, I ain't coming to church. That is so vague. What if something is wrong with you? And then you send a text and say, I ain't coming to church. And then three days later, my God, you offended because you told your P12 leader that you weren't coming to church. My God, so the P12 leader went on about her and his business, not knowing that you, that you was in an emergency. And you needed your P12. But you didn't tell your P12 that. You just said you weren't coming to church. And now you all offended talking about the P12 don't work and all that stuff, but you never told your leader that I need help. I'm not coming to church because X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, when it's happened, my God, when that leaf begin to die, my God, when someone begin to get offended in a 12, my God, all the 12, my God, shift all their energy towards that one soul trying to recover it. And what happened is, when we begin to shift all of our energy, my God, towards one person, my God, that want to be childish and want to be immature, I'm going to keep it on the dollar, my God. What it does is saps all of the strength, saps all of the energy, saps all of the refreshing out of all of the other leaves that's healthy. Because we give all our focus and attention to one leaf that want to be offended. Are you with me so far? And so, therefore, when we begin to do that, what it brought to me is it made me understand that there are situations that's going to always be going on in the body. And so, therefore, I can't give all of my energy, all of my time, all of my prayers just to that one leaf. My Oh, my wife, help me, boy. Y'all need to follow me in the spirit. Come on, bad man. I can't give everything, all of my focus and attention to one person. It's 200 plus people. I can't focus on one situation. That's it. Lord. And when we do that, we drain all of our energy. Needs. That's heavy revelation right there, baby. Yeah. So what did I just help you? Ooh, don't think that I'm going to make your life, your problem, your situation, yeah. Yeah. everything in my life because I won't do it. I can't allow you to drain my energy. If we be doers of the word, a lot of stuff we won't be dealing with. Somebody give God a hand. Can't get this in 45 minutes. I'm not going to even mess with key number two. I'll deal with it next week. We're talking about gathering resources. Let me close it. Every solution, church, every solution, and every solution we need is in the word. I'm going to close it with this right here, y'all. Every solution to every problem, the answer to it is in the word. My God, our most valuable resource This is the most valuable resource. How about open it up and read it? Uh Uh-oh. What am I doing? Flipping them pages. Flipping them pages, <laughs> Flipping them per- pages with the intent of input. That's right, Pastor. I got situations going on. So I need to find out what the word of God says about my situation. That is the best instructor. That I can't give you what this can. Yeah. Your, his or her, husband or wife, can't give you what this can. See what I'm trying to say? And so when you're talking about gathering resources, I promise you, every business, I'm closing, every business idea for those that are already in business, the business that you got on the inside of you that God put inside you, the resources that you need for that business that God, your manufacturer, <laughs> put in you. Don't, don't you know that the business that you're thinking about, the ideas that you got, who gave them to you? So, my God, and so now that idea of that business, my God, that God put in you, your source, your creator, your maker, come on, somebody, put in you. Don't you think, my God, that he didn't forget that I've got to make sure that I got something in the word of God, resourceful in the word of God for her or him? 
to be able to get something to glean from, from the word of God? Your business is in her. Your resources, God going to tell you what resource you need to enhance your, and increase your, your capacity concerning your business. God put that business in you. God put that idea in you. Come on, somebody. And so, therefore, he didn't forget about you in the word of God. Have you ever thought about, my God, let me go find out what God has to say about my business. What I can't find now, you ain't looked hard enough. He says, seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Ask and you shall receive. See what I'm trying to say? And so, therefore, God gave it to you. And so, therefore, he gave you the manual. <laughs> Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Watch this. Oh, my God. Like low self-esteem for all those that's dealing with low self-esteem. God thought enough of you to die for you. That's how valuable you are. So let's lay it down. Get that out your, take that up out of your alabaster box and lay that on the altar. No more would I put my value or my self-esteem based on what has happened to me or what was said to me when God died for me. When God said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. See what I'm trying to say? You got to accept what God says about you. God thought enough of you. What about your financial struggles? We're talking about resources. Financial struggles, the word tells you how to manage and supervise and increase your finances. This is the best financial plan in America. Mutual trust and all those different, my God, the financial advisors, a lot of people that's in the natural that we run to to get wisdom from concerning our finances. Guess where they got it from? <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them went to schools, institutions, but a lot of their financial wisdom and the knowledge they got, they got straight from the word of God. Why is it that the people in the world know how to use and operate the keys of the kingdom better than we do? They don't even read the Bible, but they want, you got people, and I know some of them, my God, that don't even go to church. They believe in Christ, but they don't go to church, but they pay their tithes, and they don't even go to church. One thing about tithing, my God, is a principle that God cannot deny. Yeah. You don't have to be a Christian to be a tither. Yeah. And you got people that's sitting up in corporate America, different people that ain't even thinking about Christ for us church-wise, my God, that honor God. Some of them, my God, strive to live for Christ and don't even realize they strive to live for Christ. They try to do good. They get the good old boy system. But they honor some of the principles that's in the word of God. And God won't go against his word. Come on, church, because his word is him. So if he deny himself, if he deny his word, that means he denied himself. So you don't have to be in Christ for God to bless you. See, I'm trying to say, but a lot of the world, my God, has came in into, came in here and opened up the word of God and extract the principles of the word concerning finance, and they just put them in a the format. Come on. And they use it, my God, to teach us something that we should be reading and getting from ourselves, and we paying $100 an hour for something we're supposed to get free. It's amazing. I thank God that I got mine free. I ain't paid a dime. I got in that book and flipped them pages and woke those principles Come on, somebody say, started from the bottom, now I'm here. Started from the bottom, <laughs> that ain't for me, that should be for you. The word tells us how to supervise and increase our finances. I'm through with this. It also tells you how to manage or how to supervise your marriage. We know that the enemy is striking. Because the strength of a church, real, it's like they say, the strength of a, of a community is the marriages. Single women took, take, take lessons and learn what to do and what not to do. As the first lady told her daughters, my God, you got to know how to choose your battles wisely. Every time he responds, don't, don't mean you have to respond. Close your mouth sometimes. Shut up. Especially if it's going to cause more problems. Quit being so spiritual. Get someone to shut up. Stay in the spirit, woman of God. Get someone to shut up. Know when to talk and when not to talk. That's men and old men. If you're looking for your wife to submit to you men, but you're inconsistent, you up and down, and your word is not something that she can build on, don't expect for her to submit to you. Because a woman that knows who she are, a woman of purpose, and a woman, my God, that is been, that's able to do it by herself, don't need no man she can't trust. A lot of us is frustrated because we want our women to submit, but we ain't giving them nothing to submit to. We want them to follow. Follow what? What you giving them to follow? What you giving them to follow, man? How long y'all been married? 35. 35 years. First lady and I have been married, what, 20? 18, how long we been married? 18 years, been together, going on 31 years. I think I'm qualified to tell you a little something. 
I think she's qualified to tell you a little something. Just because she ain't got a microphone in her, man, I, in her hand don't mean nothing. I promise you, I'm sleeping on that one right there, baby. I got to do is bump up on her. I got to do is get a phone call to her, get to her. She, she got a whole lot of substance in you. Yeah, yeah. One thing I know about that right there, she know how to treat her husband. That's why I ain't tempted to do nothing. Because I'm happy. I'm good. I'm great. I'm outstanding. That ain't pride. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm a camp man of God. I said I'm a camp man of God. I've been camp for 20 plus years. I said I've been camp for 20 plus years. Been camp for 20 plus years. Let's close it with this here. In this season that we're in, whatever issue you're facing today, the resources to it and the solution to it is God's word. You cannot move away from the word. In this hour that we're living in, quit letting people tell you that that's outdated. Man wrote that. How you know that's true? It contradicts itself. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away. Why would God, Tamisha, say heaven and earth? That means everything in heaven and everything on the earth is going to burn away, pass away, whatever, Sherry. He said the only thing going to be left is him. Him. See, I thought I was going to say the word. The only thing going to be left is him because this is him. Everything. And so if everything going to be burnt away, passed away, then why not anchor your life on that? Yeah. That, I'm telling you, that's a cold revelation. Y'all think I'm just up, I'm not playing. Because see, many of y'all think I'm playing. I'm not playing. That right there is the only thing that's going to be left, Valerie, when it's all said and done. Why? Because that's what God says. It's the only thing left, mama. Only thing left. So why won't we read it? It's too hard. I don't understand. Don't you know how many, I've been reading the Bible since 1995, every year, since 2003, since we started one year reading. Every year I start over in January and just completely start over every year, like repetition. We cross over, my God, in January 1 of a following year, I just cross right over in my one year reading. My God. And it's things that God is showing me even now after all those years that he did not show me previous years. Because yes. yes. God will give you and reveal to you when you are ready to handle. Yes. The Bible says God gave to each one of those men according to their ability. Mm-hmm. Meaning the level of responsibility. How responsible are you? See what I'm trying to say? You want God to give you revelation but you're not even being responsible with the revelation he already gave you. Mm-hmm. Revelation gives increase. Knowledge should give increase. Knowledge should bring about a transformation. Knowledge should cause you to get healed. Knowledge should cause you to get healthy. Knowledge will transform your mind. Knowledge will also transform your life. Knowledge, my God, will help you collect, collect resources that you need to birth that business. Knowledge, my God, will help you fix your marriage. Knowledge will help you uh, uh, lead your children. Come on. Knowledge. We're sleeping on knowledge. Knowledge is powerful. But we have to be careful because we got that we don't be puffed up. Knowledge also puffs up. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody teach you that because you think you know everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would know if you know about your lifestyle. Again, as I started with revelations, I'm going to end with revelations. Yeah. Jesus said, those who ever heard, let the church hear. Let the church hear. Jesus said, I know that works. I know that works. So resources, stand on your feet. Resources. Resources. We got to be resourceful. We got to be resourceful. We got to be resourceful. We need resources to do what we are called to do. We talked about two Sundays ago, we talked about the ability. A lot of us know our ability. Now we just need the resources to begin to accomplish the things that God has given us the ability to do. Are y'all with me so far? So as I pray, I don't necessarily feel an altar call. I just feel a corporate prayer. Right where we at. Pastor Teresa, come pray a corporate prayer for the body. And then we're going to release you to go be blessed. And gather resources.
to their business, to go spend time in prayer, asking God, what resources do I need to do what I'm called to do? Who do I need to connect to? What changes do I need to make in my finances so that I can be resourceful? Are y'all with me, church? These are some of the questions, my God, that you and I have to take to the Lord because we need to. And if you feel the need to ask God to forgive you for mismanaging the resources that he has already given you and you have not done what you were supposed to do with it, then you ought to come to the altar and ask God to forgive you. It's not good to walk up out here knowing that you and I, I and you are disobedient with what God has given us. That's dangerous. That means we'll become desensitized to the spirit of the living God. God has given many of you resources, but you ain't done nothing with it. And you ought to ask God to forgive you. If you are allowing fear to rob you, you should be at the altar. If the spirit of disobedience is robbing you, you should be at the altar too. Yes, 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 yes. If I'm not doing what I know I'm supposed to do, then you should be at the altar too. If I don't know Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, you should be at the altar too. Mm. If my self-value, my self-worth, my self-confidence, my God, is not what the Spirit of God said it should be, then you should be at the altar too. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord God. Lord, you said in your word, if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, Father God, you said that you would hear from heaven and that you would heal the land. And Father, I'm praying, Lord God, that you would continue to forgive us. Lord, wash us and we shall be clean. Cleanse us and we shall be made whiter than snow. Father, I'm asking you to turn our hearts toward the things of God. Turn our hearts toward you, Father God. Turn our hearts towards your word, Father God. Forgive us, Lord, if we've wandered, Lord. Forgive us if we held on to things and people tighter than we have been willing to hold on to you, Lord. And Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord God. Shift us into that place. Lord, when we begin to release some stuff so that we can receive what you have for us, Lord. Forgive us for not being good stewards of our finances. Forgive us for not tithing. Forgive us for not giving, Lord God. We knew we were supposed to do it. And Father, we decided to do what we wanted to do with our money. But Father, I'm asking, Lord God, that you would give us a revelation of giving, a a revelation of tithing, a revelation of stewardship, Lord, not only of our time, Father God, but of our relationships with one another in church, in our families, in our marriages, with our children, Lord, in P12 groups all over the world, Lord, even pastors with their sheep, Father, that you would give us a revelation of relationships, Lord God, and their purpose. Lord, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that you would give a fresh hunger and a fresh thirst for your word. Lord, those that have strayed away from your word and their foundation is almost non-existent in the word, Lord, that you would give them a hunger to begin to get in your word. Like Pastor said, that's where it starts, in the word of God. And that's the only thing that's going to stand through a trial. So, Father, I thank you right now for each one that has surrendered to you and submitted to your word that was spoken today. Pray for our pastors, Lord God. Continue to breathe on them. Continue to breathe on their marriage. Breathe on their children and their grandchildren, Father God. Touch us in Jesus' name.